Hey guys, Hop here. Thank you for tuning in to TFB TV. I'm out at the range today with the new Ruger Ready Dot. This is a non-adjustable, non-electronic micro red dot specifically made for the Ruger Max 9. This was officially announced at the NRA annual meeting this year and it generated quite a lot of discussion. I think a lot of people were understandably skeptical about how well a passively illuminated red dot sight that cannot be zeroed could possibly work. So we're going to take a closer look at this thing, talk about some of the reasons why it probably exists, the reasons why maybe it makes a little bit of sense, and then we'll talk about the possible shortcomings as well. Stick around. The Ruger Red Dot is specifically designed for use on the Max 9, which has a shield RMSC footprint. So technically this will also fit on any other gun that uses the shield RMSC footprint or the Hollow Sun K cut. The difference between those is that the RMSC pattern has four little recoil lugs, two at the front, two at the back, and the Hollow Sun version has some shaved down lugs at the front and omits the two at the back. My theory behind that is that Hollow Sun just needed to save more space in the body of the optic. I don't necessarily think they were trying to be all that different, but who knows. The Shield RMSC footprint is the ubiquitous standard for micro compact carry guns like the Ruger Max 9, even though I don't know anybody who's ever seen or used a Shield red dot sight at least not in this country, maybe they're more popular in Europe. The Ready Dot will fit pretty much every pistol in this size category, but remember this is not an adjustable Red Dot. There is no zeroing that can be done with this Red Dot at all. You just mount it and hope that it's pretty much close to on target. We've got the Ruger Ready Dot mounted to the Ruger Max 9 pistol. This is the gun it was specifically designed for, so it should work on this gun if nothing else. Got some steel targets set up at 20 yards. This thing is supposed to be used for, you know, pistol distances, so 20 yards might even be stretching it because as the FBI tells us, the mean average distance of a self-defense handgun shooting is seven yards. So we're stretching it out quite a bit beyond that envelope, but oh well, if we can't hit it 20 yards, I might be a little bit skeptical. Okay, we can hit the silhouette just fine. Let's go for the smaller gongs. So we got some eight inch gongs at 20 yards. Somebody might have to check my math on this, but the 15 MOA dot is not a whole lot smaller than an eight inch gong at 20 yards. Granted, most people, particularly in this country, are a lot bigger than eight inches around, so. Good enough to hit steel. The Ruger Red Dot is a passively illuminated red dot, so this is not electronic. It doesn't have an LED emitter. It doesn't have a battery. There is instead a fiber optic coil in the back, and that serves as a light collector for whatever ambient light you have available to you, and that projects the dot onto the front lens. So the principle is, of course, exactly the same as any other reflex sight. However, the method of powering is more similar to an old-school Trigicon reflex sight or an ACOG. This means you're pretty much at the mercy of your ambient lighting conditions in order for the red dot to generate a red dot. That's been a problem in the past with optics like the Trigicon RMR Dual Illume versions. Those have a fiber optic collector on the top and they also have a tritium source for illumination in extremely dim lights. Those have a reputation for never really being bright enough if you're in mixed lighting conditions. If you're standing out in the sun, a fiber optic illuminated dot like this is nuclear bright, but maybe you're standing in the shade pointing out into the sun. Maybe you're inside of a car pointing out into the sun. I know a whole bunch of you guys saw the announcement of the Ruger Ready Dot at NRAM 2023 and said, that is absolutely insane. Why would that ever exist? And I can think of a reason why it might exist. Red dots are a great way to shoot a handgun. They definitely improve your potential speed and accuracy, but there's also a pretty substantial learning curve, not just in shooting them, because you've got to get sort of practiced at presenting the gun and acquiring a sight picture with the red dot, 
a bit of a transition period maybe if you're used to shooting with iron sights. But the other challenge that red dots pose to a newer shooter is in getting them set up and zeroed. Zeroing a pistol red dot can be really difficult because you're going to encounter parallax issues. You're going to have the general difficulty of getting a really good sight in on a pistol because a lot of people have a hard time shooting a pistol very precisely at the ranges that you're probably going to want to zero at. You can rest a pistol on bags or on a surface in order to get a little bit of increased accuracy and stability. However, you got to be really careful with a red dot because the way that you shoot a pistol rested off of bags or a bench is probably not the way that you shoot a pistol standing. Given that there's a pretty substantial parallax error that can be introduced at say 10 to 25 yards with a pistol red dot, you might find that you've zeroed your red dot for a seated position and then you stand up and try to shoot it and your zero is off. A lot of micro red dots, particularly in this footprint, also don't have adjustment clicks. They just have free spinning hex turrets. So when you shoot and see that you're a certain distance, for example, high and to the right, how do you adjust for that? You don't know. You've got to spin the turret a little bit randomly and hope for the best. So this theoretically takes one of the major headaches out of red dot shooting for a new shooter. Just putting it on a gun and getting it zeroed and properly lined up. In theory, this thing, when you mount it up, it's already factory zeroed. Now, the problem that presents is that you're really at the mercy of the manufacturing tolerances of the optic itself, as well as the gun you're going to put it on. Hopefully every Ruger Ready Dot will be on target with every Max 9 because Ruger controls the manufacturing of both of those. Maybe if you go ahead and put this on another pistol, even if it technically accepts the same footprint, it may not line up. Could be that different manufacturers use slightly different cuts, or it could be that another manufacturer's Red Dot optics cut clearances and tolerances are not exactly the same as Ruger's. So there's really no guarantees, but this is an extremely inexpensive red dot. These things retail directly from Ruger's website for 99 bucks. So in a lot of ways, I guess you could afford to take the chance. That doesn't necessarily mean I would recommend this thing. There are some downsides. For example, the 15 MOA dot size is a little bit on the large side. A lot of handgun shooters, particularly competition guys, really prefer a larger dot, and that's because they're going for speed of acquisition and engagement, not so much shooting extremely precise groups. And that seems to translate pretty well to defensive handgun shooting. If we believe, as the FBI tells us, that the mean average engagement distance for a self-defense shooting is seven yards, then we don't really need to be capable of extremely precise shots. The other thing to keep in mind with handgun red dots is that you shoot with both eyes open. So even if the dot is very large and kind of obscures your target, you're still able to see the target with your other eye. Assuming you have another eye, I know some people like try to refute me by saying that they've lost an eye or they're blind in one eye. Well, obviously I'm not talking about you, okay? I'm talking about two eye people. All right, just for the hell of it, I'm going to try to go as fast as I can on the uh, half silhouette from slightly closer than I have been shooting. This is about 15 yards, so see if we can actually go. I can't really shoot the Max 9 very fast, especially not when my hands are this sweaty. The dot kind of got away from me at the end of the string there, but uh, yeah, certainly acceptable accuracy and acceptable speed. Don't think I would do much better with the iron sights on this pistol. Really, that's just me not being able to shoot a Max 9 very quickly. But yeah, I don't think the, the red dot is hampering me, certainly. The size of the dot, not an issue, not at this distance. If we were trying to shoot at, say, 50 plus yards on small uh, targets, then yes, we'd have an issue. Because not only is the zero relatively unrefined, but the dot is huge. 15 MOA sounded fine to me on paper. I was like, well, you know... Uh, competition shooters use like 8, 12 MOA red dots all the time. Um, I really like carrying with a 6 MOA red dot. I don't find that to be even at all too big. Definitely prefer it to a 2 or 3 MOA red dot on a, a micro pistol. So I was like, yeah, 15 MOA? Sure, why not? Just make it even bigger. But, uh, man, that's a big ass dot. Another potential advantage or downside of the Ruger Ready Dot is that the dot itself sits very low and the window is very small. That means that the dot sits at or very close to true co-witness. So you're actually lining up the sights exactly as you would with the irons, except instead of using the front sight, which on the Ruger Max 9 is a combination tritium fiber pipe, you're actually just laying the red dot on top of that sight. So you get a much bigger, much brighter front sight, in essence, still nested back between the very large U-notch rear. All right, I'll just try holding in the middle of the window first. Hi. 
Yeah, okay, now I'm gonna try burying the dot into the sights. It's kinda hard to, to force the dot down that far. That feels a little unnatural to me. So how well does this thing actually work? Not too bad. Luke C and I tested this thing out, not just on the Ruger Max 9, but also on a Taurus GX4 XL Toro, just to see if it was reasonably close, and it doesn't seem to make too much of a difference which pistol it's mounted on. The one issue that I have with this thing is that my inclination is to center the dot in the optic window, because that's how I shoot other red dot pistols. If you do that on this gun, you tend to shoot really high. Although, again, we are using 124 grain ammunition, tends to shoot a little higher than 115s, but the flip side of that is that you're probably carrying a 124s as your defensive load, maybe even 147s. Heavier bullets tend to hit slightly higher at close range. It's a physics problem. I don't pretend to understand it, but I do notice it when it happens. So as long as you remember that you need to bury the red dot in the bottom of the window so that it actually lines up perfectly with the iron sights, yeah, it seems to be definitely on target for engagement distances of 7 to maybe 25 yards. If you ever find yourself in a situation where the ambient lighting conditions are not enough to generate a dot for you to shoot with, the advantage of this setup on the Max 9 at least is that you've still got full co-witness of the irons through the optic, including a tritium front. All right, overall, I think this thing actually pretty much does what it says it's going to do. That's not the same thing as me recommending it. First of all, I would probably say don't chance it if you don't have a Max 9. Don't buy the Ready Dot. This is definitely a package that's designed to go well together, and I assume that all guarantees and all bets are off if you try to put this thing onto a different pistol. That being said, I don't really like the Max 9. Not really a fan of this gun in general. So I wouldn't recommend that you buy a Max 9 and put a Ready Dot on it. But if you do have a Max 9 and you do like it, and you'd like to uh, maybe dip your toes in Red Dots, but just the whole process seems a little bit intimidating, or maybe the price point, uh, the cheapest electronic red dot that I would probably typically recommend is a Hollow Sun 407K and uh, that one comes in typically at about 225 so way more money significantly bigger investment than a Ruger ready dot which you can get for 99 bucks directly from Ruger so that's a lot of caveats I know almost a Paul Harrell level of caveats but if you meet all those criteria then yeah this actually is not as bad as some of the YouTube comments would have you believe Although I'm sure you're going to read a whole bunch more of those below this video. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. TFB TV is sponsored by Venture Munitions and Top Gun Supply. Check those guys out. They make the show possible. They also supply us with stuff for giveaways. Uh, you can also support us directly via Subscribestar and formerly Utreon, now known as Playu, which is uh, one of the worst rebrandings, I think, in the history of rebrandings. But anyway, you can check both of those out. There should be links in the video description. If you support us, you'll be eligible for all the cool giveaways that James does. You get to watch a special Q&A series that James and I do and sometimes drag other TFB members into. Uh, it's, it's more fun than it sounds. And it sounds pretty fun. But I'm biased because uh, I'm in those videos. Anyway, see you guys next time. Brrr.